Great. Well, I think this um, session that we've been given is advertising dead, very cheery topic, um, but follows on very nicely from what we've been talking about, well, threads throughout the morning about responsible gambling, and um, this obviously is just one part of it, but it is a really key part. Um, I think we, we know, I think it's fair to say that gambling advertising has not has moved beyond facing a backlash. Um, public opinion is influenced by the media and the current political mood, which obviously can change very quickly. Certainly in the UK, we're seeing regulators, both gambling and advertising regulators, combining to take steps to ensure that gambling advertising is more responsible, with a particular emphasis on ensuring that children, young persons, and vulnerable groups are protected from harm. And recently, this has in, um, resulted in a lot of guidance which has come out to seek to remove things like erroneous perceptions of risk and control, impulsiveness, a sense of urgency, trivialization, all of these things from gambling advertising, an attempt to really change the tone of it. Um, we've also seen that the Gambling Commission has made compliance with the advertising codes a condition of the license. So that, again, is, is the gambling regulator trying to take a, a step to make this compliance much more, ha have much more bite. And we've seen the industry uh, group for responsible gambling have removed um, gambling in live TV broadcasts um, from the whistle to whistle action. Um, so we're seeing a lot less of sports betting advertising, which was previously allowed um, during, those, during those TV broadcasts. In a few weeks, as has been mentioned, we will have a general election in the UK and all of the major political parties have made promises about gambling reform of some sorts, but specifically relating to gambling advertising, both the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats are looking to restrict it in some way, with Labour even going um, as far to say that if um, the removal of gambling advertising in sports does not um, happen through the sports industries themselves, so people like the Premier League putting a ban on that, then they will um, bring in legislation to remove that. What we see elsewhere <laughs> goes even further, um, and there's a well-documented advertising ban um, in Italy, um, and it's obviously a political move, but could that, could that reach further? Can that you know, spread throughout Europe, Karina? Well, I would say it's, <laughs> it's already happening, actually. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, what I would call a, a, a very, very um, dangerous contagion, which uh, is uh, uh, making waves <coughs> across, across Europe. And uh, the latest from, uh, from uh, the... Um, from, from, from my country, uh, that now we are also seeing some um, um, enforcement. Uh, we, we had a little more than a month ago, we had the first uh, case of uh, sanctions being issued and levied on uh, an operator in connection with uh, alleged um, illegal advertising ban. <coughs> and this was the first ever um, case of enforcement uh, 50,000 euros were fined uh, to this operator. Um, it was to be expected. In my view, it's uh, obviously it's uh, it's not good news for the operator in question, but it's good news in terms of now having a, 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 a judicial platform to action to see whether uh, these, to, 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 to challenge this, this um, advertising ban as it was uh, conceived and delivered to, to the market. Because the, 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 in my, my view, the real issue here is, uh, it's not, it's not a, a matter of, uh, is it appropriate or not appropriate? Is it legal or not legal? Is, is it good or not good to provide some uh, some regulations when it comes to adver gambling advertising? Obviously, the answer is yes. 
there was an abuse, there was an over, the overly excessive uh, offer of advertising, uh, gambling advertising. That's not the point. The point is, is there a, 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 a trade-off point? Is there a, a, a level of uh, appropriate uh, regulations versus a, a, a draconian blanket advertising ban as we have in Italy? The answer is, in my view, yes, there must be a balance. And because the politicians, the, the uh, wannabe politicians that we have in Italy at the moment, uh, were completely unable to deliver something that makes any legal sense, let alone commercial sense or rational sense, legal sense, the time is absolutely ripe, in my view, to um, challenge this gam gambling advertising ban before a court and bring the whole thing to the next stage. I, I, I think that when someone who has uh, some more familiarity with laws and regulations than the politicians that delivered this ban will deal with this abortion, which legal abortion that we have uh, been uh, handed uh, in, in Italy, they will say something, they will make some rulings that will help redressing, rebalancing the whole thing. That's my hope. I guess it does go to show, doesn't it, that if you've got a political party in power, they can take those steps. They can just decide to, to kind of not look at the balancing act and that that can be driven. And it was only, this, uh, only a few weeks ago um, that Sweden's Minister of Social Affairs was chatting um, to, yeah, to... Even as we speak, he's criticising uh, the gaming companies for just using the right to appeal decisions by, by the gaming authority. Uh, that's strange, but it's, it, I think the politics of, of uh, advertising is, very, is really interesting. And uh, we, as many panels ha have said before, uh, the gaming advertising has no friends, basically. And actually our min uh, responsible ministers have made a political career out of criticizing uh, 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 gaming ads. So the case I was litigating in, in the Swedish court and uh, the court rendered the judgment uh, uh, last week and we, we lost of course because ag against the background of this uh, court case uh, the responsible minister actually initiated uh, 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 a leg legislative uh, committee to uh, uh, put in restrictions on advertising. And at the background of this, constitutionally, all Swedish courts actually, uh, uh, they listened to this. And uh, since there were no case law before on the concept of moderate marketing, it was really easy to strike down uh, uh, the marketing of uh, uh, Ninja Casino. But saying that, as I, I agree with Corinne, maybe some of this marketing should have been uh, uh, struck, uh, struck down. Uh, uh, but still, you have to see the p politics behind this. And now, I, th I don't think we are going as far as, uh, as Italy and Sweden. I think we are uh, along the lines with the UK. But still, we have no political parties who are actually going further, as you imply that Labour did, you know, trying to ban something uh, 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 in, in total. But one thing that's interesting in what I, which we found out when we were litigating this case in the Swedish court. It was between 2015 and 2018, the, the market spending or investment in marketing on the Swedish gaming market in view of the Swedish licensing system increased by 100%. But gambling went down. So it's advertising dead, I don't know. But the interesting thing is to go into the reasons why uh, we don't have an increase in, in gambling when uh, we have a, a, such an immense uh, investment in, in advertising. And if we go back to the point that it, it sounds like Sweden and similarly in the UK, there's a, a drive to make moves um, to curtail the amount of advertising so we don't get to a point where the, there's a political move to, to ban it completely. Um, how, how do we know where that point is? So, it, if who who ultimately, I guess, should take responsibility for 
for, for saying, look, this is too much, or this is what we need to do to, to bring this back. It, it, is that, you know, at the moment it feels to me, certainly in the UK, that that agenda is being driven by the media, yeah. um, fueled by political statements, but, you know, sh should it come from the, yeah. the industry itself? Yeah, uh, because I think J Jason in the former panel was actually trying to address this issue of you can call it the politics of online gambling or uh, when it comes to uh, the gaming addiction and when it comes to advertising. I think uh, the, uh, the industry needs radical change and be more up to date with the values and ethics you know, of the age group maybe 18 to 35. In that age group uh, more than 50% uh, has ad blocker installed in, in, in Sweden. So. I think that, and I, I think they need, we need a, ra a radical shift, basically, and try to integrate, you know, more contemporary values of, of the customers uh, into what we do. If I may say something, uh, it seems to me that uh, although the politicians, of course, uh, are uh, responsible for the, the big uh, mess that uh, at least we have in Italy and potentially we, we could have in other, uh, across Europe uh, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, but the industry should be also looking at itself and asking themselves the question whether they did enough to prevent this from happening. Um, uh, if, I, if I go back to before, shortly before the, um, the gambling advertising ban being uh, unleashed in Italy, I uh, remember uh, one night I was watching a, a football match uh, uh, with my youngest boy, who is a very keen Inter Milan fan, and I was not really focusing on, uh, on the pitch, uh, but on the perimeter side. What was going on on the perimeter side in terms of advertising? And I counted up to 11 different brands being advertised one after the other, and that's clearly too much. That's clearly too much. And, uh, you know, what I fail to understand is why the industry didn't take any preemptive action knowing that the politicians would jump at them, would definitely take gambling as, a, you know, especially in a Catholic country like Italy, gambling is seen as the devil, the devil, the absolute devil. And so politicians are happy to jump at gambling, are are very uh, happy to introduce new taxes as they do year in, year out, um, uh, on, uh, particularly on the slot machines. Um, so they should have done something. They did nothing. They did not introduce any uh, self-regulations in terms of advertising. They did not reach out to the, um, the establishment, to the politicians, to the, the media, as, as, as an industry, as a whole industry, to say something else. For instance, to tell the politicians that just in terms, just the football, just the professional football in Italy, the Serie A and Serie B football, uh, used to get um, something like 100 million in turnover associated to gambling advertising. That money is no longer available. And, and that money was much needed for many football clubs because it's not just Juventus or Inter Milan, it's also many other clubs who are now striving to scrap a living without that money. So had, they be, had the industry been able to come up with some hard and undisputable data and put them under the nose of the politicians in time, for them at least to think, okay, maybe, yes, we need to do something, but let's do it without destabilizing the ecosystem. Maybe we would not be discussing this today. But what you're implying in you is that, you know, that capitalism actually have gone haywire the last dec decade or so, and uh, uh, the, the, the gaming operators are not really caring about, you know, stopping this development. They are just, you know, uh, leaning into it, basically. And it's, it's very difficult for them to do anything else when the Swedish monopolist, big monopolist in Sweden, is investing, raising their investments in advertising by 80% in view of the new licensing system. What, what can they do? Uh, so, 
Well, Ola, you, you're absolutely right. And uh, to, to confirm what you just said, um, I would like to emphasize, to, to, to stress that, for instance, the gambling advertising ban uh, is uh, fully in place for any type of products but lotteries. Lotteries are excluded. You can advertise lotteries. Why? Because they are state-run. So there is, a, a, there is a, a clear discrimination. Shall we say that lotteries are not a, game, a gambling product? What, what are they then? Of course, they are. of course they are. Of course they are. Of course they are. So uh, to, to your point, it is absolutely true that, um, that the industry, uh, the operators needed to gain some visibility and they needed to establish themselves in the face of, of the state monopolies. But, you know, that was 10 years ago, yeah. okay? Now we are seeing a different movie and the, the industry is there. They have established themselves. Some of them are very popular because they have been on the jerseys of many Italian football clubs. They have been, uh, actually, B-Win was sponsoring the, the championship as a whole. It was called, uh, Serie B was called Serie B-Win. So, I mean, they, it's, the situation that we are faced with is different. And now that they are there, they should rather uh, worry how do we stay alive without getting the politicians jump at us and uh, uh, crack down on us. That's the real yeah, issue. Yeah, but we have to be honest here. You know, uh, when I ask my, my uh, daughters, like one millennial and two next gens, you know, uh, they say, and they, when they see uh, gaming, gaming advertising, they say it sucks, you know. When I ask my older friends who are like uh, CEOs of media campuses and stuff, and they say it, it, it's similar to the porn uh, ads back in the 70s, basically. The aesthetics and the values that they contribute sucks. Uh, so maybe th uh, we should start th there, because you, can't, you have to fill your advertising with, with, with some kind of values and ethics. It doesn't, you know... Uh, uh, we have to st start all over again in that sense, because if we don't have any, any substance, uh, we, can't, we can't win the war against the politicians. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. I agree with you, but I think one thing uh, on which we can all agree is that so far nothing has been done in, in, in that direction. And uh, maybe it's too late. Maybe in Italy it's definitely too late. Maybe in the UK or in Sweden or elsewhere, something can still be done, something sensible can still be done. A dialogue can yeah. be, a constructive dialogue can be started with the establishment. But in Italy, it's too late. But it has to be, it's got to be something that's a lot more joined up, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's got to be, you know, your advertising regulator, your gambling regulator, discussions yeah. in, and, in... Sorry to interrupt. And one essential thing is talk about data, talk about hard Facts. Do not talk about uh, smoke, yeah. okay? Because the thing is that we do not have, uh, still today, we do not have enough reliable independent studies, independent studies, that say what is the, the amount, the real amount of uh, gambling addiction problems, for instance, and what is the real amount of uh, the contribution that the gambling industry brings to the state coffers. That's another story. In Italy, we're talking in the billions. We're talking more than 11 billion euros yeah. per year. Yeah, but in, in Sweden, we can't invoke that argument because, you know, Betsson has a thousand employees in Malta. Uh, if they have a thousand employees in Stockholm, maybe we could invoke that argument. But that's the industrial policy argument is very difficult. To, to invoke nowadays uh, in, in Sweden. Well, uh, and whilst I think having data is really important because it can help substantiate arguments, sometimes it really doesn't matter what the data says. Sometimes there is a, there is a move, there is a, just a feeling that people have. Like you say, in Italy it's a Catholic country, gambling is the devil. That is, that's just a feeling people have and that you you have to be able to deal with that kind of public sense. Yeah, but then we should also agree uh, and, and, and conclude that uh, uh, many of my fellow citizens are all uh, little devils because they all like gambling. Mm. So what do we do about it? I mean, it, it, there is a demand. There is a demand. And the other side of the, the, other side of the coin is 
if you do not channel that demand for services in a legal regulated way, what happens, and again, Italy is the case in point, is that Italians will go and find those services on a dot com, on an unregulated, illegal, unlicensed yeah. dot com offer. Yeah, because the truth, basically, uh, about Sweden uh, is that when, you, uh, when the government cl or uh, the authority closed down Ninja Casino, and they had probably 20% of the market, I think uh, the, the gamblers predominantly went into the unlicensed. Uh, 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 to analyze the operators. And also, uh, you, you need to be clear when it comes to uh, channelization. Uh, I think the, uh, officially in Sweden, uh, the government has said that it, it is 85%. They have revised you know, their figures of 1995. But I think when it comes to casino, it might be down to 60%. And we need some figures. And if it's 60%, the Swedish licensing system is a complete failure. Um, from a political side. And uh, the politicians don't want to hear that. Um, and that's a big problem also con when it comes to the competition uh, uh, on, on the Swedish market between the licensed and the un unlicensed. So we've, we've thought then that what we really need to do is, is definitely innovate about how the, how the marketing messages are getting out there, maybe even look at the advertising as a whole. Um, is there any place for technology to play a part? Um, we're seeing a lot of the, um, the ASA adjudications in the UK at the moment are finding operators in, in breach of rules for um, failing to target properly. And they're, they're coming quite hard on people who are not using all of the um, methods available to them to really pinpoint um, their audience. Um, you know, is, is, do we think that that's, that's a good way of, of trying to ensure that the right people see the right things? Is there more that can be done on that front? Undoubtedly, uh, technology will play its key role um, in, at a time when you cannot resort to traditional means of advertising. And so that there will be some, um, you know, um, special uh, uh, services, uh, te highly technological services that will become available. Some of them are already available to facilitate the, um, the, uh, the, the, the bridging between the operator's officer, uh, 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 the operator's offer and the market. Uh, and I, I, I have already begun to see things happen in that, in that way. Smart ways of, uh, uh, you know, um, profiling uh, large uh, sectors of the market uh, who are, uh, who, who get somewhat um, tracked uh, in the course of other things that they do online, totally unrelated to gambling, and then their profiling gets pulled in a database uh, that is um, packaged in a way and then delivered to the operators that they, they can then use it, okay? The, there are ways to do that. Uh, AI is certainly helping do that. Uh, but I guess that um, the industry really needs to think outside of the box. They, if they think that the answer to the, the advertising restrictions is going to be uh, use the technology more and better, yes, it will help, but it's still not enough. They will need, the marketing guys out there will need to come up with some very creative ways of reaching out to, to, to the market if they want to still be seen and, and recognized by, by, by the, the clients. We're almost at time, but a couple of um, just very quick questions then. What do we think about um, the use of affiliates? Do we think, um, we've, we've heard statistics today about affiliates growing business by, you know, silly numbers, but there's a lot of problems with the use of affiliates. So sh should that be something that the industry should be canning um, and, and completely, you know, moving away from that to keep the control back at the operator level? Or, or do we think there's, there's room 
to still use affiliates in this? Well, in, in the case of Italy, certainly uh, the, uh, the affiliates network is uh, one of the answers to the, uh, the, the restrictions. Uh, the, since the, uh, the gambling ban having been implemented, uh, I have seen uh, uh, many things happen at affiliate level. Because you want, for instance, you want to uh, step up the use of uh, land-based affiliates and, uh, um, and, and, and through them uh, be able to connect to, to the market. So the answer is yes, uh, definitely. Uh, and also because of the way, the poor, very poor way the, the gambling advertising was, was devised, was, was uh, delivered, uh, there are loopholes uh, in, the, in the law which do allow the use of affiliates. So do we think advertising is dead? Uh, Ad the traditional one is yes, yes, yes. dead. Dead and buried. So we need new, new advertising um, and <laughs> new ways to do it. Um, so time's up. I don't know if we've got any questions, if we have time. I don't see any hands. No? Okay, well, we'll be around, so come and ask us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.